Hi everyone, in this video we are going to create our first smart contract and understand how we can work with it. To create our first smart contract, first I'm going to create a Rust canister. For that I'm going to say dfx new and then we are going to say its type is Rust and for the name I'm going to say example here. Once I press enter it's going to create our first canister for us. Now I'm going to cd into my directory, for that I'm going to say cd example. And let's check it out what we have in this directory. So we have our files and folders here. So I'm going to open this up in my code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any ID that you want. But it should support Rust, so it would be much easier for us to work with it. So on the left side, you can see the structure of our canister. We have our node modules and we have a source folder. Inside this source folder, we have two different folders, one for the backend and one for the frontend. If you remember from our previous lessons, we said that we can use ICP both for smart contract development and that's the future that many blockchains have. But what's different with ICP is that we can also use the frontend. We can also deploy our frontend to a decentralized blockchain. So we have another folder here for the front end, but this week we are going to just work with the backend. And then we have our environment file, we have our git ignore, and we have our cargo.tom. And that's for our project configuration. And we have our DFX configuration in the dfx.json file here. And we have our classic uh, package log.json and package.json. Now let's look at our example backend. Here, as you can see, we have another cargo.toml and that's because that's a separate Rust project. And as you can see, its name is example backend. So whichever name we give in our project, our backend and frontend will named as the name underscore backend and the name underscore frontend. We are going to write and upload our dependencies here. And in our source folder, as you can see, we have a lib.rs file. In this file, we have one function, and as you can see, it's named as query. So we have two different functions in ICP and in general in blockchain. So the first type is query. So with this query function, we are actually retrieving data from the blockchain, but we are not updating any data on the blockchain. We are just retrieving data, and for that, we are not being charged with gas fees. But with the update methods, we are actually altering some data on the blockchain and for that reason, we are going to pay some gas fees and that's the one of the biggest differences. And again, this is a query function as we defined here. And this ICCDK, as you can see in our cargo.toml, is a, a dependency here. So that's where it's coming from. Now, if you look at our function, we can see it's a simple function. So we have a name, which is a type of string as a parameter for our greet function. And we are returning a string here. And the string that we are returning is constructed with the format macro here and we are appending name to hello world here. So at the end, whatever we type here as the name, we are going to retrieve it as the string from here. And after creating our contract, let's say this one, which is a very, very simple one, we need a way to communicate with the front end so that the front end would know how it can work with this functionality. What can we give as the parameter to which function and what would we expect in return? For this communication, we have our candid language in a dit file. So we have our dit file that is constructed for us, as you can see. And in this dit file, we have a service section. And under the service section, we are defining our methods. And if you remember, our method name was greet. So we said greet. And then we defined the type of the parameter. Our type was string, but we set text here because in Kant language, we are using text instead of saying string. And here we have the return type, also a string, but in this case, it will be a text and the type of the function here. We are saying query to indicate that that's a query type, but if it was an update function, we wouldn't say anything. And I think it makes a lot of sense because if one is query, then the only other function is the update function we have. So that's the basic structure of our project. And in our next lecture, we are going to create a different one. So we are going to alter it to learn the different parts of smart contract development on Internet Computer Protocol. Thank you very much for this lesson. And I'm going to see you on the next one.